What's up guys, Cliff here with The Sunday Drive, and today we are fixing one of the most common problems with the 14 to 18 model year Silverado and Sierras, we're replacing the AC condenser. All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're gonna to be replacing the AC condenser. This isn't a hard job at all, um, and we'll show you how to do it with very basic tools. Um, now, if you aren't aware, the AC condensers are extremely uh, common to go bad on the 14 to 18 model year Silverados and Sierras. I'm not sure if it's the same, but it's also probably the same on the Tahoes and the other vehicles that have this same uh, engine setup. Mine happens to be the 5.3, but it's identical on the 6.2 um, and other motors that come came with this generation. Uh, so th basically what happens is near the welds, usually over here, but it can also fail in other places, um, they break and your Freon leaks out. So. Um, that's what happened to mine. I've actually been out of AC for a few years, um, but I've been doing so many other things on the truck and it was sitting for a while while we were doing the AFM delete, um, but we're finally gonna get this installed so I can have some cool air conditioning again. Um, so if this hasn't failed on your vehicle yet, it will. If you just bought a used 14 to 18, um, it probably is gonna fail even if it was replaced in the past. Now GM did modify these. Um, to help make them more robust. But from what I understand from talking to the dealer, they still tend to fail over time. So just be aware, even if you replace this, it might fail again. Now, there might be good aftermarket options out there. I'm not sure, I haven't really looked into it. I already had this one, so I'm gonna put it in. Um, but I'll definitely do some research. And if I find a good one that has good reviews, I'll link that down in the description so you guys can check that out. As always, parts and tools will be down in the description. We really appreciate it. When you go through our links, it helps us out and helps us keep making videos like this. Although I would have made this video anyway because I wouldn't have AC. Now I already have the front of my truck apart a little bit. This is not necessary. I just finished deleting the AFM DOD system on here and I decided to hold off on putting this back in until I was done this just to make sure I didn't mess anything up, but this is not necessary to have removed. Now you will need your plastic cover removed that's on top of here. It's just held in by a whole bunch of push pins. I'll overlay some footage from a previous video where I removed that. Um, but you will need to remove that plastic shield at the top. Very easy, I think it's about 10 push pins that hold it in. Now we are gonna be removing this top bar first so that we can pull the condenser straight out from the top, making the job a lot easier than removing the radiator and all that stuff and then having to do your coolant. So first thing we're gonna need to do is pull this air box out. Um, so you're gonna wanna disconnect your MAF sensor, you're gonna pop this red tab up and then press in and pull off. That's all there is to it. Now we're gonna loosen the hose clamp and you can either use a, I believe, seven millimeter, but flathead screwdriver works just as well. So we have that loose now. I'm gonna loosen up this bar so I can pull this out of here. Remove the 10 millimeter, that's right here. Okay. And I already loosened the top one up there, and then you can just swing this back and out of the way. Pull that hose off. And this is just gonna pop up and out. It's held in by a whole bunch of grommets at the bottom. So, this might pop off. If it does, it just clips back in place right here. Now, all the bolts and nuts that I'm removing, I already went ahead and pre loosened them by hand. Um, I never like to use a power tool on something that I don't know how tight it is. So, always loosen them up a little bit by hand, and then you can take your power tool and finish it up. Gonna remove the 10 millimeter here and loosen this 10 so that we can swing this arm out of the way as well. that out of the way. Move the 13 right here. Now below the sides of this cross brace are three 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove. Um, to access them, I need to not fully remove this, but I need to be able to bend it down more than I can right now. So I'm gonna buy two push pins. I'm just gonna open them up a little bit with that pick tool so I can get a pry tool in there. Now we've got the inside out. Once you have the inside out, you can go on the back and pry the whole thing. So it's a two-part clip. You need to pry up the middle. You can fully remove it like I did, and then the bottom will slide out. And remove the second one right over here. Again, just going to open it up a little bit with the pick tool. You can also use a flathead screwdriver. And then get in there and pry that out. 
careful that you hold on to it so it doesn't drop down and you lose it. And now we have access behind that real easy. We're not going to fully remove it, but we can push it down out of the way. Here you can see the bolts that are below. Again, these are 10 millimeters. There's one here towards the middle, one on the outside, and then one closer to the inside. Not really going to be able to see them. It's just put your hand down there and just feel for them. Now getting to a couple of these is kind of hard to go straight on. Um, if you're using a traditional wrench, you can get on there, but this has a little bit bigger of a head. So what I'm doing is I'm going to a swivel 10 millimeter with a little bit of an extension that lets me get up on there. Now we need to remove the three from the driver's side. Now one of the bolts over here is a little bit harder to get to and that's because of this reservoir right here. And we're not gonna fully remove the reservoir, but I am going to remove this 10 millimeter right here, which isn't gonna give me a ton of extra room, but it does add a little bit of play. All right, same 10 millimeter bolt that holds in the bottom. So now we have a little bit more flexibility here. And what I'm gonna do is take my tool and go underneath here. And we're gonna actually get a little bit longer of an extension, I think, and then go straight up. Now, if you don't have this, a ratchet here should work as well. You should be able to ratchet down here with a long enough extension. There you go. And this was the extension I ended up using. I think it's a six inch extension. And then this little swivel head on the end uh, definitely made all the difference getting on there. This tool is a lifesaver for situations like this where there's not a lot of room to ratchet. Um, but there's other methods to get that obviously. Just take your time with it. But that one is gonna be a little bit, bit annoying probably to get to. Now get the last two out. These are really easy to get to. They're in the same locations as the other side. Now this last one, you do have your a uh, release cable for the hood latch, so just make sure you're not pinching that or anything, so just be careful. Now we'll go ahead and remove these two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator in place. Uh, to get this out now that it's loose, we're going to lift it up and rock it towards the back and then you're gonna lift up on the passenger side and slide that out towards the front. Radiator's nice and loose now. Um, we're gonna remove this top black shroud right here. It's just held in by two clips on either side. I'm gonna pop those out. You can just use your finger. You don't even need like a tool. Just so gonna push the clip to the side and then this is gonna pop up. So lift this tab out and push up. I'm gonna do the same thing on the passenger side. Okay. All right, now uh, with those two released, there's a whole bunch of little clips here. You can just pull this up and it'll come up. Now, as I mentioned, I have not had AC working for about three years. The Freon has slowly uh, escaped from this system from wherever the damage is. Um, but if you still have Freon, on your, Freon in your system, you wanna make sure you capture that properly. You don't wanna vent that into the atmosphere um, if at all possible to avoid it. So make sure you're capturing that. But again, my system is empty, so we're good to go and remove this. Now we have one connection over on the driver's side to remove right here, and then there's two connections, uh, three lines total, but two connections we have to undo on the passenger side. So to remove this, we're gonna just pop this plastic cover off. It's just a little black cover like that. Now we have a snap ring right here. Um, what we're gonna use is just a pick tool. That's all you really need to get this off. Just find the ends of the snap ring, which are, one of them is right here on mine. Move my pick tool up into that opening I created, and then work my pick tool down behind, and just push the whole ring off. I'm gonna loop the pick tool around it so it doesn't go flying and I lose it. All right. And there you go. Now the condenser actually comes with a new snap ring, at least mine did. Um, Probably can reuse that snap ring we removed as long as it didn't get damaged. However, looks like the new one has one, so we should be good to go. Now we should be able to work this line out of here. 
Now I don't know how much of a pain this is gonna be considering the age. <laughs> This is a 2014 truck, so it's not a new truck anymore, although it still feels pretty new to me. <laughs> there it goes, okay, got it. Now, one thing I didn't realize um, is this is actually a shared unit. So this line going in right here is part of your transmission cooling system. Um, so just be aware of that. A little bit of transmission fluid might come out. Tiny bit came out, not a lot, um, but just be aware of that. And when you go to pull this out, there's going to be some transmission fluid in here. So not a bad idea to double check your transmission fluid level. Um, once your condenser is replaced, you might need to add a little bit more in them. Same connection over on the passenger side, remove the black clip back. And you're going to have the same type of snap ring in here. There we go. See, it's popped up now. All right, number two is off. So we're down right next to where the air box was. There's a 13 millimeter nut that you need to remove to remove the AC lines. And this is where you wanna make sure all your refrigerant is drained out. Once I broke that free, this uh, actually is sprinting off very easily. So you just use your fingers to remove it the rest of the way. Now you do need to reuse this nut, so don't lose it. Now we can wiggle this connection off. All right, so here's the two connections. Um, when you wiggle this one off, the bottom one is just gonna kind of fall off because it's held in place by this top bracket that you can see right in here. So here's the, the lower one and the upper one. They're two different sizes, so you should be able to mix them up. Now we wanna replace the two gaskets that come off of the AC lines on the lower part of the condenser. So we'll have these linked in the description. So there's the two new gaskets. While you're in there, definitely replace them. You don't wanna have an AC leak from there and then be trying to track down a whole new issue. So we're gonna take a pick tool and pull the old seal off. You can see that the inner O-ring right here is pretty shot. Um, so definitely a good idea to replace these. Okay. Now, I don't know if the orientation of these matters, um, but from the one I pulled off, it looks like this side that kind of has like this uneven edge. It's kind of has like this ripple pattern around the edge, goes towards the condenser. Whereas this side that looks a little bit smoother goes towards the line. Um, so I'm gonna put it back on in that same way. Don't think it's gonna really matter because it seems like you know, you're gonna make a good seal regardless, but. On the passenger side, there's one more 10 millimeter bolt that we need to remove. This holds that bracket that's coming off the side of the condenser. It's pretty far down there, so. Now this is one of those situations where a tight wrench like this actually really comes in handy where you can ratchet up top and turn the socket down at the bottom. Um, so we'll have this link down in the description. The wrench wasn't quite working super well because there wasn't a lot of room to turn it. So now, this here. All right, there's that little Bolt removed. Now you guys have probably seen this wire here and wondering why you don't have one. Well, that's because I hooked up a light bar in the front of my truck. It's actually still working really well. I installed this several years ago. I've had zero issues with it. It's right here. Um, if you guys want to know how to hook this up, I actually have it wired up to my high beams in the truck with a three-way switch, so it'll operate with those and also independently. We have a couple videos I will, we will link above and also have down in the description. So if you don't have this wire here, don't be alarmed. You're not supposed to. All right. so. Now we need to actually get the condenser out now that all the connections are removed. Coming off the radiator right here is a clip that holds the condenser in place. So you wanna be careful not to break this, but you're gonna push this back and then you're gonna be able to raise the condenser up. All right, so we're gonna loosen that a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the same over on the driver's side. I believe there's also a clip over there. Pull this line back out. And again, try to come out straight because you definitely have to have some uh, transmission fluid in here. All right, all right, so I got this side started. I'm gonna, okay, it seems to be staying there, so it's not clipping back in. All right, now it's starting to be a little bit more loose. There's like a black plastic on the bottom. I just pushed down so that that wasn't coming up with me. 
Now the only hard part is really over on the passenger side where you got to work around that line that comes off. And I'm just going to put a Scott towel over here to help keep the transmission fluid from coming out. All right. go. So that's how much uh, transmission fluid was in there. So not a ton, but there is a little bit in there. So add this much back into your transmission system when you're all done. Now we need to transfer over some of the plastics to the new condenser. So first thing I'm going to do is remove this little mounting bracket right here. <clears throat> all right, so you're going to want to rock it over towards that direction, and then this will pop out. I'm going to set that to the side and just make sure you put it on in the same orientation on the new one. And then these side plastic pieces, which help channel air to the condenser, need to be popped off. So I'm just going to work them off with my fingers. They're not really on super tight, no real tricks to this. Just kind of push them off. Slide that around. There you go. And I'm just going to set it over here so I know the orientation. And we're going to remove the one from the other side. Same idea. And I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit so the front of my truck doesn't smell like transmission fluid. It just pops off. And again, just going to Put it in the same orientation. There's protective covers that come in your new one, so I'm just going to pop these out. All right. And then the tops also have some protective covers. These are actually, I think, okay, they do come out. And there are, like I said, new clips in here that you can use. If you want, pop these into your old condenser so that nothing comes out of it. All right, now we're going to take this, feed that around. Pop that on. And then we're going to take our bracket, which again goes on like this. And then you're just going to rotate that up. Get it to pop into place and there's some maneuverability back and forth so you can line it up exactly where it needs to be. The only major difference I'm seeing between the two designs is this addition of this heat shield here. Uh, at least that's what it appears to be. Um, but that's new on this one. Some of the welds look maybe a little better and nothing substantial. Um, one thing that is kind of a little bit janky or weird is that um, you can see here that these fins right here are messed up. It actually came that way right out of the box. And if you compare it to the one that I just pulled out of the vehicle, the fins are also messed up in that one, not as extreme. So it looks like when they're building this, they actually um, slice through here. Let me pop this back off a little bit so you can see. <clears throat> but right here, you're gonna see there's a slice right through here. Um, I was initially worried there was something wrong with it, especially with the damaged fins, but I compared it to my new one. It's the exact same way, so not sure that's not sure why they design it that way or manufacture it that way, but that is how it is. So now we're ready to put it back in. At this point, um, there are little clips on the bottom of these two side shrouds that do clip into a black plastic piece at the bottom. Um, so when you're pulling it out, you will need to put a little force on that to get that to separate, and you want to make sure that clips back in place. Now I had a lot of leaves and debris down in here. Um, definitely clean that out because that's restricting airflow to your radiator um, and that's obviously gonna, what helps keep your engine cool. So clean that out, but make sure you're not damaging any of the fins when you do that. So just be careful. All right, so we're going to slide this new one down in place. All right. Just take your time with it. Be careful. All right, now you're going to want to set the bottom of it into the bottom 
slots first. Once that's in place, you're just gonna lift up on a little bit to get the top one to go in too. All right, so we have the truck mostly back together, but there's a couple things we wanted to point out to you that might help in the reassembly. That L bracket, that was that plastic piece we transferred over from the old condenser to the new one and mounted to, uh, with a 10 millimeter screw to the uh, radiator shroud, we could not get that lined up without putting a lot of force on it. So we didn't really wanna add a lot of unnecessary tension onto that. So we decided to leave that out. Um, yours might fit better than ours did. If it does, definitely screw that back in. If you have an issue with it, I don't think, I, I think it's better to leave it out, but um, you can make your own decision there. Putting the two transmission lines back in was very hard. We ended up having uh, two people help. So one person holding the other side of the condenser and the second person pushing that line in. So um, that is gonna be pretty uh, challenging to get in, but stick with it, it will go in. Um, the other thing that we noticed was when we went to put everything back in, the radiator over on the passenger side was sitting too high. The, the whole assembly after the condenser and radiator were combined back together, everything was too high over on the passenger side. And this could also happen on the driver's side. Um, there's basically a rubber boot at the bottom that sits down and below uh, the frame here. Um, so if you, or at least your front clip, it's not really the frame, but your front clip, if you feel in from about this area, obviously we have the front off, so that makes this a little easier. And you feel in here, there's about a one inch diameter rubber uh, grommet that sits down in a hole inside the frame right here. So you can feel that. Mine was not seated in over on the driver or passenger side, so this side was high. Um, it was seated in over on the driver's side, so you didn't have an issue there. But if you're noticing that your whole system here is too high um, on one or both sides, most likely that rubber boot is not seated down in that hole where it's supposed to go. So just a couple things to keep in mind. So that's it guys, that is how you swap out the condenser on your 14 to 18 Silverado or Sierra, also probably on the Tahoes and Suburbans like we mentioned. But we hope this video was helpful. As always, parts will be linked down in the description as well as any of the tools that proved helpful in this job. So definitely check those out, it helps us out when you go through those links. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys back here next time. Okay, you can do that again.